Part Two, Chapter One of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part Two: The Medieval Church, A.D. seven sixty eight to fifteen seventeen. Chapter One: The Medieval Transition. The significance of the Middle Ages lies in their transitional character. The ancient period was the time of the planting, organization, and doctrinal establishment of Christianity. The modern period was to witness the application of Christianity to the social, intellectual, and moral needs of the world. Between these two lay the Middle Ages. It was the far-reaching mission of this remarkable period to test the power of Christianity for meeting the wants of new nations, to withstand the shock of philosophical schools, to sift and preserve the best that remained of the ancient world and pass it safely down for modern use, and, above all, to prove the ultimate power of Christianity to rise above the infirmities of those who professed it, and to lay the foundations of a new spiritual life by a return to the pure apostolic example the office of the medieval church was to conduct man from the narrow limits of the pagan to the protestant world the scattered threads of the eighth century were caught up and combined into unity bauer says this whole period can only be regarded by the observer as one of transition at the close of which the varied elements which appeared in different quarters concentrate into unity and thus show forth the church of the middle ages in the full significance of their universal grandeur the first period of the medieval church extends from charlemagne to the papacy of gregory the seventh a d seven sixty eight to ten seventy three this was the time of the full appropriation and unification of the germanic and other northern elements mohammedanism lying at the border line between the ancient and the medieval time arose as a counterforce to christianity papal supremacy in church and state culminated the second period extends from gregory the seventh to the removal of the papal see into france a d ten seventy three to thirteen o five here the absolutism of the papacy was broken and the freedom of the people dawned the monastic orders assumed larger proportions speculative science was introduced into theological inquiry this was scholasticism it perished in the same age which produced it the crusades were organized during this period the third period continued from the removal of the papal see into france to the reformation a d thirteen o five to fifteen seventeen the papal unity was shattered humanism arose which reacted upon the old order and made possible the revival of vital christianity and a momentous activity of mind with the thorough break-up of the pagan conditions there arose a new order the introduction of christianity among the rude nations of the north had the effect of increasing a new literary spirit no department of thought was left in its old stagnation the quickening was intense with the beginning of the middle ages there was a departure from the old modes of historical statement the old frankish chronicles had been monosyllabic and the roughness continued in the successors of tredegar but with the ninth century there came a smoothness and beauty in which one can see the effect of the close and finished masterpieces of the greek and roman period scientific inquiries arose in part original and in part derived from the introduction of arabic science through the moslem invasion of spain monasticism preserved the great works of the fathers and saved to the world by patient copying the richest productions of the masters of greek philosophy and the drama and roman history and poetry the knightly poetry of the twelfth and thirteenth centuries attained to beautiful forms and became the foundation and inspiration for much of the poetry of the most recent centuries new and bolder types of architecture were applied to sacred buildings and the most impressive edifices of modern times here took their origin the plastic arts were developed for the first time in christian directions dante petrarch 
and boccaccio were at once children of medieval thought and prophets for all the future the italy of to-day is not less their creation than it is that of garibaldi and victor emmanuel political solidification was in progress the love of liberty and its certain possession by the world's numberless millions were born in the time which has passed by the name of the dark ages looked upon in retrospect there is almost no priceless intellectual or political treasure of the nineteenth century whose precious seeds were not cast in the ready soil between the ninth and sixteenth centuries End of chapter one